time to get your imaginations in gear. Um, next up, we're going to be uh, hearing a little chat between Dominique Bouchard and Kemko Joku. So before I invite them to the stage, a little insight into them as beings. So Dominique has got years of experience leading exhibitions and public programs all around the world. Uh, she's an experienced curator and educator with a particular expertise working with marginalized communities and divided societies. So uh, that's why Dominique's so busy, definitely. <laughs> and Kemka is a photographer. So um, I wanted to read you a little something, actually. They collaborated together as part of Shout Out Loud project, which I'm sure they'll be telling you about. And um, Kemka, his uh, input into that was a project called Finding Common Ground. So not to be confused with common ground, but we're all looking for it. Kemka, did you find it? Found common ground, excellent. <laughs> Still looking for it. So as part of that, uh, here are some words that he said about um, finding common ground. So for a little over two decades, my life and who I have defined myself has been dictated on the notion of me never standing on the right ground. As a child of black African immigrant parents, it was common for many people like me to feel distant from where they're supposed to be, inherently grateful, yet embarrassingly confused. And as a black British citizen and visual storyteller, it is my responsibility to document the stories of my people, both those of past and present. Stories of immigration and cultures inherited from foreign soil and now embedded into the new British way of life. I title this project Finding Common Ground as I wish to represent my people through portraiture and fashion imagery, feeling at home in a country we also claim as our own and cementing our story in a metaphorical book of English heritage. And so, with those words freshly in mind, I invite to the stage Dominique Bouchard and Kemko Joku. Hi, everyone. Can you, oh, great, I can, I can hear myself, so you can probably hear me. Um, Thanks so much for, uh, well, for coming to, to the program and thanks so much to everyone, especially the young people whose vision this is. It's really incredible to see the way in which your hard work and, and ideas end up, you know, creating something real and tangible that brings us all together. I think it's really exciting. So what I'm going to uh, talk to you about first um, a little bit is, uh, is this idea of framing the heritage of the future. And in their brochure, you'll see a little description of it. It's sort of about um, how we do things, uh, at how we've done things slightly differently at English Heritage and um, uh, with, um, you know, taking our, uh, sort of taking in some space. So the, just to give you a little bit of overview, oh no, that's the wrong direction. Uh, it, this is English Heritage. We are a national heritage charity that looks after around 420 different uh, historic sites, monuments, um, and statues all around the UK. The, the monuments and statues are all in London and the blue plaque scheme. Um, about 10 million people come to visit our sites every year. We look after places that you've heard of, like Stonehenge and Hadrian's Wall, and loads of places that you probably have never heard of, and also I've probably never heard of either. Um, uh, and, and our role is to ensure that these places are preserved and stewarded for future generations, but also to, to educate people and provide information about these, these places which, you know, belong to you, uh, belong to everyone. Um, so Shout Out Loud is our national youth engagement program. Um, it was one of the Kick the Dust projects funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund and many, many other um, organizations that generously supported. This is a totally new approach a new activity for English heritage. Um, and what I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about ne next is, is sort of risk um, and how, how organizations can do that. So, so the way that Kemka and I, I think are gonna to work together um, this morning is I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it from an organizational perspective and, and hopefully give you some, um, some stuff that we've learned that, that might be helpful to you and then I'm gonna get out of the way. And that's actually basically the message of the talk um, as well. Uh, so shout out loud, you know, we didn't really, as an organization, have a, an established 
targeted youth engagement program. We worked with young people through vol our volunteering program, and we have a really enormous, really wonderful schools program. But as far as a, a concerted strategic approach to understanding how we can integrate youth voice into our organization, how that can change us, change the fabric of who we are, wasn't really a pl that didn't really exist before Shout Out Loud. So, so Shout Out Loud in itself, as from from an organization like English Heritage, which only became a, a charity, independent charity in 2015, is a really enormous step, you know, I think, um, and it was a really genuinely uh, held view that if we wanted to, to be relevant to future generations, if we wanted young people to, to sort of take a view of these places and feel a sense of ownership, we needed to do things differently, and we probably needed to talk to some young people about it, and possibly even give them some uh, control of, uh, of what we were doing. So there are a lot of questions, these are the questions that this conference organizers asked me to, to answer, and I'm not actually going to answer any of them. Um, but I think they're really important questions because I don't have any answers for them. I, hopefully you're all going to ask these questions of yourselves and of your organization, probably not exactly with Shout Out Loud, but I have kind of one answer for all of this. Um, and it's, it's really what we, what we learned and what we went into um, when, when we did this project. Um, and, and really, it's about risk. And what I want to talk to you about is how is, is when you take a risk as an institution, how do you take it, how do you take it, why do you take it, and when do you take it? And these are the main questions we needed to ask ourselves about, uh, you know, try to answer when we go into things. You know, it's a, as heritage professionals, we know how to keep places like Stonehenge from falling down most of the time. Um, we know how, we know what to do if there's mold growing on something. We know, or we think we do, how to tell people stories and make audio guides and, and little exhibitions and interpretation and all of that great stuff. Guidebooks, our guidebooks are really lovely. People love them. Um, but, what, but going from, from there, which is a sort of expert-driven approach to interpreting and telling the stories of our sites to a place where we're going to incorporate youth voice, like what does that even mean? Um, and so all of this was a, was a risk. And, and I think risks are really, really brilliant. Um, and I'm not saying risk in terms of we needed to like danger, look out, sort of a thing, but, but risk in terms of understanding what the opportunities are, what are the things that you're asking yourself and your organization to do differently, and what are the consequences of, of that. And, and again, when I say consequence, I don't mean something negative, but, but when you have a cause and effect, what, what is the consequence of the actions and the decisions that you're taking? And you need to be comfortable with ambiguity, and you need to be comfortable with the outcome not really being in your control, and and that's what uh, and that's what for us um, one of the brilliant projects that Shout Out Loud sort of enabled us to do and demonstrate the benefit of risk to the organization was through England's New Lenses. Um, so my my advice to you all, and I'll tell you a little bit about what England's New Lenses is, is do one new thing. Not everything new, just one new thing. And so for us, in relation to the England's New Lenses project, we did one new thing. We partnered with an organization called PhotoWorks. They're a national uh, photography charity. They're one of our consortium partners from the Kick the Dust project. Um, and we said to them that we wanted to do a project where we worked with young people and gave young people support to think about and reframe what a heritage site might mean to them. So we commissioned, we worked with Photo for Works, and we commissioned four artists to create new bodies of work, each of them, inspired by the English heritage site of their choosing. And we took all of the stuff that we're really good at, that we think we know what we're doing. So we took all of the history, so all of the collections, we got our properties curators, our gardeners, everybody kind of came together to provide material and give insight into these places selected by the young people and we helped them to identify places as well that, that were, would, suit, would fit the bill for them. Uh, and then we got out of the way. Um, and the new thing for us was kind of getting out of the way. And I think that that principle of one new thing has been really, really important for us um, 
because it's important from, you know, you all have, have teams that you work with, you all have managers that tell you what to do, you all have people that you probably tell what to do. You know, if you want to bring people with you, everybody can get their head around doing one new thing. But as soon as you start making it more complicated, there's loads of little variables that, pop, variables that pop up that come up unexpectedly. But if you're really sure that you're going to do one thing and you're going to ask your question, yourself the question, why are we doing this one thing? How are we going to do this one thing? And when, because when is also really important. Then, you know, you can get out of the way and feel confident that you've done your bit. And then, you know, give up control, which is really difficult for all of us, um, especially if you're involved in engagement or outreach or learning or any of these areas, we're all a bit into controlling what happens because we want to minimize the risk of failure. But with risk, there's always a failure. So there's every chance that we went down this road, we worked with a wonderful photography organization, they really know what they're doing, they're brilliant. Um, you know, I, I recommend everybody look them up and, and try to work with them. They're amazing working with young people. You know, they're a brilliant, brilliant organization. They know about photography. We're never going to be a photography organization. We're a heritage organization. We need to focus on keeping Stonehenge standing. But we, by working with them, that was, that meant that, that all of that expertise was there. So for them, their one new thing was working with us. Um, and so together, we created this environment. But at the end of the day, we weren't really sure if we were gonna get any bodies of work out of it. Um, because, take a risk. Um, we're enormously pleased, um, I'd say, with what happened. Um, and uh, I think I'm gonna hand over to Kemka now um, and, uh, and get out of the way, just like I said I would. Okay, great. Um, Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, my name is Kemko Joku, and today I'm going to present my project, which was um, part of the English Heritage and Photo Works um, Shout Out Loud scheme that they had. And yeah, as you can see, um, my project, which happens to be called Finding Common Ground, which I think I found it now, <laughs> um, is to do with my understanding of being a black British citizen and looking at the history that my people have gone through to get to where we are now as a society. Um, and I think if you guys haven't checked yet, I know we've said it before, but there's like a little red booklet on every table. So um, in your free time, you know, you can read through it and, you know, take it home, have it on your coffee table and just be like, when people come through, hey, I met the speaker here, you know, at the Common Ground Festival. But um, yeah, so my project, Finding Common Ground, like I said, looks deeper into my understanding as a black British citizen. Um, following the whole turmoil and events of 2020, I really became introspective in how um, I saw myself and where I came from. And it just happened to be while I was doing a bit of light research into black British history, um, I came across the open call from PhotoWorks and English Heritage to do the, um, take part in the, what's it called? Shout Out Loud scheme, sorry, England's New Lenses. And when I saw that, and I saw that the whole theme was heritage and what heritage means to you, a light bulb lit in my head where I was like, wow, I've just started looking at something that I'm quite interested in. Um, I really want to make a body of work from it. And I start going down like a deep rabbit hole into my culture and where I came from. So just to give like a little rundown of some of the images, um, this one here is pretty much just a result of research. So throughout, my pro throughout the project, there was a lot of research. Um, speaking with English Heritage, they asked me to kind of go through the, all their sites and look at the one I want to work with. And I always say that the first one I chose was literally the last one. So normally people start at the top and I was like, okay, let me be a little bit different and start at the bottom. And it just happened to be Rest Park. And when I looked it up and did some research, I said, yep, I don't need to check anything else again. This is where I want to do my work in. So um, after having some meetings with English Heritage, they invited me to do a little recce trip of the site where I learned more about the history of the site, um, how it was turned into a hospital during World War II, um, the use of the garden spaces. You know, If anybody has the opportunity to go there in Bedford, I really recommend it because it's just an amazing space. And um, yeah, after going through you know, their site and looking more at what I could do with the space, I went back home to London and I started doing a bit more research, you know, diving into things like film, music, you know, going through photos. And I remember my dad sending me 
just a massive chunk of photos on the table one day and being like, these are pictures that you know you, your grandma had in her photo book. I don't know if she took them, um, but they were just pictures of where I came from, you know, and um, my grandma lived in East Nigeria, which is where my parents are also from, and I am as well. And during the trip, actually, I took a trip to Nigeria, which wasn't planned, it wasn't part of the research, but I used the opportunity to really look more at my heritage from another side of the world. So going through these images, I really connected with a lot of them, and one of the pictures was second thoughts. So the idea behind this picture here is, um, somebody who just migrated from Nigeria, living in the UK, and really doubting you know, where he stands and whether he should go back to Nigeria and continue living there or take a risk, really, and start a new life in the UK. And I really connected that with this photo here, which I just liked how you know, this man was dressed up and he just really you know, liked this tree so much he had to include it in the photo. So this was one of the images that were used. Um, yeah, this was one of the main pictures actually that ended up being the hero image for the project. And I like this one simply because of the use of the space. So um, Rest Park has a beautiful garden, a beautiful exterior and vast amounts of land. And inside it has beautiful, beautiful um, arrangements of paintings, um, old historic rooms. And I really wanted to find a way to incorporate the space, you know. A lot of the things inside were very delicate and we couldn't exactly you know, pull out books from the library and all. But when we went up the stairs, I saw this amazing portrait on our recce trip and I definitely knew I wanted to make an image out of it. So this was called Gestural Greetings and it really is just highlighting how different cultures, different black cultures from different parts of the world, mainly West Indian culture and West African culture came to the UK and had to learn to you know, understand each other's differences in the land that they're not like used to living in. So as well as having to understand maybe English culture and the way of living here, we also had to learn and adapt to living with people who were looking like us in a space where we both were kind of unfamiliar with. So these were two different gestures that were used here from, you know, different gest like gestural greetings, I guess. And um, I just wanted to use that with the backdrop of the painting just to show the space in which these people were living in. So. This is one of the images. And um, yeah, here you've got another image, um, one view of the temple. And I use this as a reference to the Japanese artist Hokusai, who did a lot of work. Um, I'm pretty sure you've seen the iconic painting of you know, the waves that he's done. And in the background, he had Mount Fuji. And he did a project where um, he did 36 paintings, and each of them had um, Mount Fuji somehow in the background. And I really connected with this image for some reason. And when I did the project, I said I have to use this temple that was at the site and kind of um, reference that. And I guess you're wondering, why is there a, Ch you know, a Chinese temple in Rest Park in the middle of Bedfordshire? Well, the house was a very prestigious house back in the day. It still is, but like the people who used to live there were very affluent. And one thing I, real I learned from my research was that they used to have discarded pieces of China from the Far East sent to the UK. And their understanding of the Far East, China and Japan was pretty much built off these fine pieces of China. And um, what they had to do was that they now looked at the China, they saw it and was like, oh, this is an amazing piece of China. I'm gonna make a building that looks just like that in my garden because I have all the money in the world. And that's exactly what they did. So um, when I saw that, I was like, okay, how can I connect the history of the site with my own work as well, and kind of use it as a way of not just highlighting the project I want to do, but also highlighting Rest Park and the beauty of it in a sense. So this was one of the images. As you can see there, I was in the corner um, trying to arrange the shot. It was a freezing cold day, um, but we tend, like we made it work. And um, here, like I said, I just wanted to highlight the beauty of black culture throughout um, the 20th century. And we had an amazing styling team who were friends of mine. And one thing I told them is that, you know, you can do whatever you want, but I want the model styled in black British designers. And um, they searched far and wide. We went to some high fashion labels. We also went to some young designers who were still in school. And we just kind of collated a beautiful array of people to just work with. And this is just an example of it. You know, Chialoka here, who's my friend, she has an earring, which is kind of like um, a menthol-related sweet that we eat in Nigeria. And um, I liked using that as a reference point, just kind of like minimal touches, just to show you know, our culture and little nuances that if somebody who grew up in Nigeria sees that, they will instantly understand. 
And um, yeah, just one of my ways of highlighting beauty in our culture through the images. Here again, we've just got um, two of my friends, Cozy and um, Fermi, who were just literally just having a chit chat. On the right, everything looks really happy there, but I was really annoyed because whenever I tried to get them to take a picture, they'll just keep on chatting. Just keep on talking throughout the whole day. So I was like, you know what, do your thing. So I just let them talk and then I sat down, I got my camera, everything ready, and in the right moment, I just got this image here. And um, I just really like how, you know, it's a raid. I love that, that you can see the building in the back. There's a, like, in the corner, there's a little man sitting down on something. Um, just a nice little touch that Rest Park has. And um, yeah, on the right, like you can see, we're just doing a little dress rehearsal, literally. And um, I got one of the backstage images from that. And um, yeah, another reference, you know, lots of references. <laughs> a lot of research went into this. And um, the more I learned about my culture, my history, the more I just had to use these um, references and include them in my work. So this image was called, um, I need someone to whisper it to me, it's been quite a while. <laughs> Lovers Rock, thank you very much. <laughs> and Lovers Rock was a project that was done in um, Lewisham in 1976, I believe. And these images were kind of iconic at the time because it was really just a casual party that somebody had in, um, I believe, a council house or so. And I said, you know, to create the love story that I want to do with this project, I had to include it in my image. So I can go on for days and days about this project. There's so much I want to, like, I can, you know, dive into. But I'm just going to keep it brief and just show you that, you know, some of the images I found during my research were what were referenced here. Again, you know, just backstage images of me working at the site. As you can see, it's a beautiful garden. Um, you know, if you're ever looking for something to do on the weekend, definitely stop by Rest Park. But um, yeah, it was amazing how English Heritage, when the project was set up, like Dominique said, gave me so much space to just kind of push away and let me do my own thing. And at first it was very daunting for me because it was something where when I have a project and I'm working with other people, I really want to know everything they want to do. And um, when they just gave me the space to create how I wanted to, I think that's what made the best piece of work that I have done so far. So I'm really grateful to them. And um, yeah, definitely find one new way of doing something because I feel like when you give people that opportunity to show what they really want to do with as much resource as possible, then they tend to make amazing work. So I really do hope you enjoyed me talking about this project. Um, like I said, you know, take the books home, which we want to flick through them. It's not just me on it. There's three other amazing artists who are part of the project. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful for English Heritage and PhotoWorks for giving me this opportunity to make this body of work. So thank you. I just want to... I just want to say to Kemka um, that we're so incredibly proud of this work. The Government Art Collections actually purchased a selection of all of these artists' um, material. And this is sort of the best, this is what heritage should be. You know, it's not about, it, it, Kemka and Michelle and Mia and Abena, the artists who, who were commissioned through this process, have made an indelible mark on the sites that they have interpreted. And it's that process of interpretation, which means that these sites maintain their relevance and, and, and maintain their relevance into the future. And so the, you know, when we talk about that, that space, when Kemka talks about the space, it's not, we didn't, on some level, make the space. The space was there. It was about us removing ourselves or, or, or supporting, but not dictating. And I think that that is, you know, how all of these spaces belong to everyone. Mm -hmm. It was yours before you, before you ever went there. And so that, that process is really incumbent on us, that, that responsibility is incumbent on, on those of us who work in institutions to, to create those opportunities um, and, and, to, you know, and to support. So I'm um, really grateful to you, Kemka. Please take these catalogs home. Please show them to other people. Um, we're incredibly proud of the work, and if you want to get in touch with any of the artists, um, please let us know and we can, we can do that. Um, and at some point, all of the artists' work, this is really what I wanted to say, will be available for purchase. So if you would like to buy one of these prints, um, again, please let us know and we can make sure that you, um, you know, that you're, 
that you have that opportunity. Yep, definitely. Thank you again, and also for Dominique for you know allowing us, like I said, to have our space to create and do things the way we wanted to. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed our talk. I think that's the end of it. Thank you.